5050, honoring 50 years of Title IX and the women moving the world forward. W Studios 5050 Shorts are presented by Google, proud advocate of women in sports. My name is Noura Bukaram. I went to Islamic school my entire life. And my parents taught me my religion very well. From a very young age, I've always felt so connected to Islam. And I really couldn't wait to take that step further and feel even more connected to my religion. The hijab is essentially a covering but then it just goes so much deeper than that, especially when you decide to put it on as a Muslim woman, because you're stepping into this role as a representation of Islam. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. I was looking forward to wearing hijab hijab, it's, I'm covering my hair, I'm covering my body, except for my, my hands and my face, so the only things that are showing. All the amazing women in my life wear hijab, so I want to be just as amazing as them. The hijab is a very personal thing for me. I was raised Catholic. I became Muslim in uh, 2001, so ultimately I made the decision to wear the hijab I knew if I was going to raise Muslim daughters in a non-Muslim country, that I had to be the best example for them. It was such an easy thing for me because I just saw so much beauty in it. And I never saw any of the hardships that come with being a hijabi. Sports in our family, we don't necessarily see it as just sports. It's part of our parenting, because in this life, you have to learn to take criticism. You have to learn from different people. So I feel it's really important for children to actually experience. I brought some hot chocolate out, so when you're done, we'll have hot chocolate here. Come and get a cup of hot cocoa before you get out of here today. Did you need all? It was the day I feared most when my daughters were going to wear a hijab. I became very well versed in um, rule books and the newest athletic wear, what's the best fabric for this? Like, what will hinder the performance? Like, what is it that we need to do to make it that they love it? Miley's cut off to you this week a little bit. Right. I never thought I'd do like my first one. I was 28. Yeah. 28. Oh, okay. Cleveland. Also, flying yeah. pig man, huh? I remember I was starting on a new soccer team, and it was the same year that I started to wear the hijab. My parents were like, we don't want the hijab to become something that she's like 
I'm not confident in this. I don't like the way it looks. I joined the cross country team late into the season. And I think something about me, especially when I'm picking up a new sport, give me two weeks and I'll have it down. I'll be the best that I can be. I was racing varsity and it was like the top seven runners on the team were racing in districts. And I was training so hard, just trying to keep up with the fastest girls on the team. All I cared was that I was there and I was gonna have the race of my life. And then the announcer announces that our team made it to regionals. And then we were like, what, that's amazing, like, it's so great, you know? Then we were like, let's go check our individual placing. And I'm looking for my name. And I was like, you guys, my name's not on the list. And then that's when they told me, they were like, you were disqualified. I was like, man, it must be because I'm wearing this bracelet. And they were like, no, it's because of your hijab. And my coach was there. And he told me, he's like, I didn't have the paperwork and I didn't have the waiver. Why do I need a waiver to race in my hijab? This thing that's been a part of me, it's practically connected to my head. He was just like, I don't know what to tell you. And I just, I walked away. When I saw her, she was broken. And that's not who I left. I left the most confident, beautiful, energetic, proud, amazing child that just ran her best race that she had worked so hard to get to. There was pieces of her. It wasn't just a piece of cloth on her head. And it wasn't just, she could have just taken it off or she could have just gotten that piece of paper. It's who we are ultimately and what we're fighting for is to exist within our best self. My older sister, who's played soccer and ran, she's experienced similar discrimination to this um, in the past. And she's experienced like, just um, like harmful words being said to her on soccer fields and stuff, but I haven't. She's always kind of been that shield. My mom knew, she was like, this might happen, but we follow the rules. We're doing everything right, so it won't happen. I was like, I'm gonna go to my room. I'll probably cry for a little bit. I'll come back and we're gonna race next week and it's all gonna be okay. So should we bring him a birthday cake? A birthday cake. I remember I was talking to my older sister and she was like, you know, we have a little sister, Sophia, who's gonna wanna play sports when she's older. Kicked it right across, far side. That's amazing. Good job, Sam. Far side? Yeah. And what about her? Who so we'll passed it to you? Great. Correct? Great. Oh, yeah. I can't, I can't let that happen. She's still got her whole future. You know, all these other girls have their whole future ahead of them. And it was that moment where I had to be like, if anyone can do this and can be the person that stands up for this discrimination, it can be me. A local high school cross country runner gets disqualified after the race because she was wearing a hijab. So naturally it was shocking for her and her entire family when she crossed the finish line on Saturday and was told she was disqualified. Once I did tell my story and the whole world knew about it, I was getting DMs on my Instagram like crazy, talking about this happened to me, the similar thing happened to me. The hashtag that everyone was using was hashtag let nor run. And I was like, it's beyond me, it's beyond sports. It kept growing. It kept growing and she had a regional race and that 
amount of support that Noor got, it warmed my heart. Then I realized it wasn't just for her. This was bigger than just her. This was bigger than us. What is it that we're doing that we are still not the face of sports? That someone anywhere in Ohio believed that they were in the right to create this rule. But we soon realized that you have to have power to make these changes. And the only way can actually have that power is to do it through our lawmakers. As a mother of a former high school athlete, my inner hockey mom came out. These kids try incredibly hard to get into a position to perform at their highest level. So when I heard that Nora's hard work was thrown away because of a ridiculous rule, I wanted to do something about it. I remember when I went to go testify, Senator Teresa told me, just tell your story. That's what they want to hear. They want to hear how this bill is going to affect people's real lives. Um, I understand this race happened when you were 16 years old. How has um, this experience impacted you? It really opened my eyes, I guess. I think I was a little sheltered to it all. And, um, and you know, I was able to meet with other great athletes who's had similar struggles. So I think this whole experience really helped me um, understand my place as an athlete in America. I'd like to apologize to you as a policymaker that uh, a policy was in place that was so insensitive, uh, it harmed you in the way that it did. Uh, Those senators voted unanimously um, out of the Senate. The bill number 181, Senator Gavron and others to enact section of re revised code regarding student religious expression and interscholastic athletics and extracurricular activities. I believe she is here with her parents and her siblings. If they would like to all stand, we will give them a house welcome. Senate Bill 181 was passed unanimously out of the House. I was honestly very proud of myself. That bill won't just be for me, but it'll be for all Muslim athletes, all Christian athletes, all Jewish athletes, anyone that wants to express their religion will be able to do so without a hindrance. I didn't understand the burden that she was carrying until it was finally passed, and I saw the weight lifted from her. And I believe this law now makes her whole to an extent. I thank her for that because she's going to make parenting my youngest daughter easier and she's going to make decision making for other parents easier because of what she endured and what she pushed for. I've never questioned my position in sports. I never thought like, you know, this probably isn't for me. I know that a lot of hijabis athletes have, and that's why a lot of them turn away from sports, because it seems like a place that's not for them. It's all about not hindering the way for women's sports. Almost like making the path as clear as possible so that way women can thrive in sports. and. That means Muslim women too.